Good morning. Let's have a better day today, shall we? Well, I found a spare tire for our field cultivator. It says on there somewhere, where is it labeled? Well, it did say on there. Did I miss it on this side? Oh, right there. 2210 field cultivator mainframe. Okay. I don't have time to mess with this. We've got to track down the parts for our planter, but we've got the tire field cultivators out there. We'll let Dad and Brock deal with that. The field cultivator is plenty far ahead of the bean plant of the corn planter. That's um, it's not a big deal anyway. So. Okay, uh, I've got a guy coming to pick up 20 bags of beans here in 10 minutes or so. So we're going to head down to the seed warehouse. And uh, my guy at the John Deere dealer said he would be there at 7 this morning, which is in 10 minutes. And uh, hopefully he can track down one of those flow meters for me, at least tell me where I need to go. Whether that's to that store and they've got one on the shelf or one of their other stores or whatever it is, we're going wherever we have to go to find one. All right, um, well, I heard back from my dealer. They have one of our flow meters. The problem is it is at the very farthest store location away from us, like could not get any farther away. Two and a half hour drive. So I'm trying to get a hold of the dealer to the south of us. Uh, they don't open for another 10 minutes, 7.30 to see if maybe they've got one at a closer store. If not, I guess we're going for a drive this morning, which is not what I want to do. Okay, update on the situation. Oh man, it's my room. Not terrible, okay. Um, so the other dealer does not have one. They have one a size smaller, but it's at their farthest location, which I think is farther than the one from the dealer that I normally deal with at their farthest location, so that's not helpful. I could probably start making some more phone calls and try and find somewhere else to go, but now we get farther and farther away progressively and it's just, it's gonna take me a lot of time. I was talking to um, my dealer, the guy that I trust a lot who deals with this stuff and I was trying to go through some ideas with him and um, this hydraulic pump is on its own SCV. It is not run off of Power Beyond. It is on a, a outlet all by itself, which means that I can control the amount of hydraulic flow to that pump. Therefore, I should be able to reduce hydraulic flow and reduce the pressures and get it to pump a, I won't know how much exactly, but we could get it to um, just put out a reasonable amount of pressure instead of maxing out whatever that pump is capable of. That said, um, there are charts. I know the size of the orifices that are in my system and I know how many I have, and if I can use the nozzle side, the pressure, and the speed, I can calculate out gallons per acre. Now, it won't adjust automatically for speed changes or rate changes or anything like that, but if I can get it close enough, we can keep planting. So, we're gonna go and try and do that. We're gonna try and dial this thing in to the point where I'm gonna look up the charts, we're gonna look up the orifice size, it's a 107 orifice, and we're gonna see how much flow, or how many pounds that you need, PSI, how many gallons per minute are flowing through those orifices at X PSI, and then multiply that by 24, and um, figure out how many gallons per minute we need for our speed, and we're gonna try and do this. Now, the store is in Holland, Michigan that has one of these flow meters. Holland, Michigan is a two and a half hour drive from here. That means if I left right now, it's a quarter to eight. It would be afternoon. It would be almost one o'clock before I will get back. They will get it to me about one o'clock. So I really am not out much doing this. And if it works, we'll get a lot done. Um, but they're going to put that part on their van and send it our way. And it should be to me this afternoon. And that is service. Like unbelievable that they are going to move that part. 120 miles, 110 miles, whatever it is, and get it to me within a few hours. Um, very, very much appreciate that. So, um, 
let's go see if we can do something. We're gonna have a better day today, right? Well, we're planting. Okay, um, so here's where we're at. I have turned the flow on hydraulic outlet number two down to 1.3. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not actually a gallons per minute number because it's a zero to 10 scale, but whatever. Doesn't matter, it's 1.3. And it's gotten my PSI all the way down to 13, 14, 16, 15, somewhere in there. And so I've tried looking up the rate charts I have a 107 orifice in there on every row. I need to do some more math. Well, I found it for 30 inch rows. So I found a chart for 30 inch rows and uh, at nine miles an hour, we should be getting somewhere in the 15 gallon per acre range, I believe at that PSI, I think. We're at least in the ballpark and we're close and we're not applying it as fast as it will physically run through the um, outlets there. So. Uh, I was kind of a helpful thing with making YouTube videos. I'm going to go back and look at through old videos and see if I can figure out where my pressures were running on that screen um, when I've been planting before. Because frankly, I don't really remember, but I think I'm in the ballpark here. Okay, well, after some extensive YouTube video searching from last year, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have no more real concrete thing to go on. So in one of my videos, this pressure was running 19 to 20, which is about where I've got it set now, maybe a touch under that. Uh, in another video, it was running like 47. Um, I don't know why. So we're just gonna leave it here because I would rather put it on a little light and have plenty than put it on too heavy and run out with 20 acres to go because I can't control it. So the other thing that I can try is I can pull out of this front tank. There's about 100 to 125 gallons in this front tank. And I could isolate it, pull from there instead of the back one, see how many acres that it plants, and then I can do some math from there to figure out how much he, how many gallons per acre we are putting on. Uh, the thing is, I have to drive a fairly consistent speed, otherwise the rate's going to change um, based on that. So I'm doing the best I can here, but we are moving. Given that I've had to search monitor history, maybe I should show them more often so I can find it easier. This one up here, this is my extended display that is showing my in fertilizer and my seeding stuff, and it is awesome. Seeding rate, singulation, even the gauge, well, it's red, but it's 100%. Like, we're, we're doing a fantastic job on the planting side of it, putting the seed in the ground. The in fertilizer, it's going on, it's the rate bounces a little bit more than I like. I don't know why it does that, um, but it's putting the right amount on. I just don't know how super even it is. So whatever, that's fine. It does pulse. It's a PWM valve, and I don't know if that's what we're seeing as the pulses. It shouldn't show that, I wouldn't think, but it's almost like like it that shows up. So anyway, we're good there. We're just kind of watching this one. I think we're good here. We're, we're doing okay. And we're up to uh, 30 acres planted in this field. We had actually done 11 yesterday. Just doing the front ends, one round on the side, and half of the back ends, we had 11 acres done. So, um, I don't know, I guess we're doing okay. We're up to 100 and, or uh, yeah, 140 acres corn in the ground, and we should be significantly more than that by the end of the day. So, we're gonna finish this field. Hopefully, we'll see where we're at with seed, but I've got a truck here if I need to go back and get some, as long as I don't hit it making this turn. Oh man, it is such a good feeling to be back in a planter and getting something done quickly. Um, not quite working the way we want, but everything's going in the ground. We've got some stuff going on. So I think when I get up here to the end, we are gonna hop out and switch our valves and start pulling out of this front tank and try and see if we can see, get an idea what gallons per acre we're getting on. See, here's the problem. I'm pulling up this hill. Oh, there's a big rock. Ow, there's a big rock right on the hill. Right there. Anyway. Um, I gotta keep a constant speed in order for my rate to be the same because it's putting a constant pressure out and not adjusting it at all. Um, so when we have to slow down going up that hill because we have enough power, it affects my rate. But law of averages, it should average out. What we care about is what we're off for our averages right. Well, that's not true. We care about it being right everywhere, but all the best we can do is get the average right right now. So we are just under halfway done with this field now. 
Uh, it was going to take about 1,400 gallons of uh, the fertilizer to do the whole field. So where's our tank level at? We should be around 700, but we put it on super heavy to start with, so. Okay. Okay, so we're maybe a touch light, actually. We could probably turn our pressure up a, a little bit. I'm gonna leave it where it's at. We're gonna switch our valves. So we need to close this one coming from the back tank, and we need to open the top one over there. That's our 300 gallon tank. And that will allow, instead of product coming out of that tank, flowing through this hose, through our filter, and then up, and then into this T up to our pump. Now we've closed this valve. We're gonna come out of the tank, the, the front valve through there, and then the T up to that one. So it's gonna just pull from that 300 gallon tank in the front rather than the 600 or the uh, 1600 gallon rear tank. The 600 gallon one there is going to our uh, our pop-up, our exact rate um, fertilizer system. So that one is isolated. Yeah, we get this low rate message every time, but 41.1, that's where we were at when we started. So we'll watch this front tank and when it gets empty or real close to empty, we'll see how many acres we got and then we can do, do some math. All right, our tank is just about empty. There's a little bit in there yet, but not much. We are up to 52.21, uh, which means we did 11 acres on that, and that's a little bit more than we should have gotten. Um, if there was 125 gallons in there, and we used it all, we should have done a little over eight acres. So what that means is we can turn our pressure up a little bit. Um, I'd have to do the math to see exactly what that was. I, I can figure it out, I just haven't done it yet. But, um, we're in the ballpark. We're close. So we're going to switch our valves back. So we'll close our 300 gallon tank. Open our trailer valve. And we'll keep going. We'll turn that pressure up to say 22 to maybe 25. I don't know. Somewhere in there. 23, 24, somewhere in that ballpark. We'll try that. We should have enough fertilizer to finish the field regardless because we've probably been putting it on a little light, but um, yeah, that's, I feel good. We're in, we're in the ballpark. We got it on at a lot, around 11 gallons per acre on that 10, 11 acres there that we were doing, and I was shooting for um, 15. So a little light, but, but not horrible light. All right, um, well, we've been planting for a while. We actually are eh, close to done with this field. Won't take too long here. Just thought I'd get out. We're gonna dig a little bit and uh, check some stuff out. Make sure everything is still looking good. I really like the job my row cleaners are doing, kind of moving some of this uh, wheat out of the way here. Just helps, seems like it clears the trench off a little bit. I don't know. Well, I think the planter's working really well. Right there is our seed. We're pretty good depth. Firmly planted in the bottom of the trench with nice uh, seed to soil contact. Sidewalls are pretty well broken out. Like I think our planter is doing a really nice job. Oh, right there. Should be one about right in here somewhere. Right there awesome okay I like it keep going okay um, last pass here a partial pass or I don't even know how many rows we're planting a 19 it looks like um, I just got a seed bin low warning which is good it means we're about out of seed but we're not gonna run out of seed we have enough to finish it means there was a little more in those tanks than I had initially thought uh, which means that the scale on our seed tender may be off a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that because that's minor inconvenience and not that big of a deal. Um, and our fertilizer, I don't know how much is in that back tank. Can we see? Sometimes I can see on there. Yeah, you can see the line. We're, we've got it on a little light on this field just in general. Um, we've got plenty. It's fine. It's fine. We're close enough. 
Uh, we're going to go back to the farm and get loaded up for the other 80 acre field that we had that was ready last night or yesterday and go plant that and then hopefully by the time we're done there we should be getting our flow meter before we're, we can move to the next stuff. So, um, yeah, we're doing okay. We're feeling decent here. Uh, and our, our inferro fertilizer is all gone on perfect. That is the other thing is like the two by two by two fertilizer is the one we're having issues with. The inferro is going on perfectly. So, uh, we're still getting fertilizer on all this corn. It should still come out of the ground and be fine. It's just, um, the rates on our, mostly nitrogen, sulfur, a little bit of phosphorus is going to be off a little bit in that 2x2 two two band. 85.33 acres seeded here. It says there's 0.72 acres left inside my boundary that we didn't plant. Now my boundaries are a little oversized. We don't plant the corners. That's where that comes from. Um, that's, that's pretty good. We'll take it. <sighs> progress. That is progress. Let's see. Can we see... Oh, where are we at in total? How much corn we got planted? Change my custom filters here. Not that. How about... No. Okay. Delete that filter. Delete that filter. Apply a new filter. Crop. Corn. Come on. Corn. Okay. Okay. Anything? There we go. Area worked, 3,000 acres. Well, that's not right. That's got all the data in there from the past two, three years. All right, we gotta have a date filter. There we go. In the last 30 days, we have planted 193 acres of corn. That's how much corn we've got planted. <sighs> Progress, okay. We're gonna plant at least that much more today. Today, easily. All right, Dad's spraying today, so he's actually spraying beans. Uh, the beans have to have the herbicide put on before they come out of the ground, pre-merge. And so um, he's working on that. I need one of those boxes. Those are both empty. We are going to drain what's left in the planter. I don't know how much is in there, but more than I'm willing to take to the next field. So we're going to get at that around, and then we got to get loaded up. Um, we're going to have to get another shuttle of fertilizer out. And... It's going to take me longer than I want it to, but we should be able to do it relatively quickly. It's okay. There's the forklift. Not a lot in this side. The other side's got a little bit more in it. Put a piece of cardboard and funnel it down into a box. It's the easiest way. Eleven V seventy six is one of my favorite hybrids. Um. We're not playing this whole field to this. This is this field I had split, and I, I want to save this for where I actually intended to plant it, or the rest of it. Uh, so we're putting about 14 units in, seven in each side, 410 pounds. And then we got another variety we'll finish the field with. But we're going to take this over and plant it out, and then we'll worry about the other one from there. So hopefully my tender is at least somewhat accurate on the scale. I don't know. It seems a little... I don't know. Whatever. If we're a little over, it's fine. No big deal. ready for fertilizer so we're gonna pump a lot of what's in that back tank up to my front one that way we can do our uh, test again and see how many acres we plant on a known volume a little bit more accurately than coming out of that tank um, it's 11 o'clock now yeah by the time we get done with this field our part should be in or by the time we get done with this field and load it up for the next one maybe uh, so we should be able to get this fixed and have it working for this afternoon which is good because we're gonna plant that irrigated field this afternoon, later this evening, and I won't make, make darn sure we're getting stuff how we want up there. So, yeah, not ideal situation here, but we're at least moving and getting something done. I think we're gonna turn our pressure up just a little bit more for this one because we had a little more left than we should have. But we changed it halfway through, so yeah, you can't overcorrect kind of thing. So I had this front tank last year that didn't come with a planter when we bought it. It's an aftermarket deal. Uh, I needed it because I have two different products and I want to be able to plant while I'm not pulling that tank. And so I use it for two by two by two, which uh, it's only a 300 gallon tank. I can't plant a ton of acres. We're only talking about 15 acres with it full most of the time, right? 15 times 15 would be something like that. Maybe a little more than that. 20 acres, 15 times two, 20, 30. Yeah, 20 acres. Um, 
but it's enough to do my plots and some small fields and stuff like that where pulling that tank around is a real pain in the butt and inconvenient. Um, <clears throat> I do really like that it has the numbers on the sides, both sides, both ends. It's easier to see how much is in it than that one that's only on the front. So uh, it's a really nice tank. I got it from this uh, Daylight Tank Solutions. If you need a planter tank or I don't know what all they sell, but they were pretty good to work with. So look them up. All right, we are loaded up and ready to go. Uh, today's breakdown news, Dad's spraying, his AC's not working either. And the AC condenser, I'm gonna call it, cooler, whatever, the part on the front of the sprayer that, you know, that, like a radiator. Um, it's gotten some damaged fins and smashed or was rubbing and clearly leaking. So just charging ain't gonna work, it's just gonna leak out. We gotta get a new, AC condenser. Great. It's great. It's fine. He can spray without it. It's cool today. It's not sunny and 80 degrees like it was the other day in the uh, 8R or 9R. And there's not a hydraulic oil reservoir directly below the cab. Actually, there might be. There might be. It's just on the other side. Anyway, he'll be fine. Uh, we'll get the part coming and, and get it fixed as soon as we can. All right, I got a guy coming to pick up some beans that I hope is here any minute. So we're gonna swing into the seed warehouse here and get those out, it's all of seven bags. And then we're going to go plant. Oh, there's my guy spreading some dry fertilizer. Good deal. They gotta do uh, this middle field back here where we tiled last year. We didn't spread it last fall because it was rough from the tiling. And then I worked it down week ago or whenever that was and uh, they're gonna spread some dry fertilizer and we're gonna work it again and then get it planted <sighs> why does it do that <sighs> sometimes when I use easy fold it puts the uh, wing wheels down and drops the three-point and then when it goes to unfold the wings it also lowers the wheels it doesn't work I don't know why but we'll try this there we go. So then we gotta put it in plant mode and raise it back up and then it unfolds just fine. Anyway, we're at the field. We set those bags outside. I set those bags outside on the um, concrete there. That guy can just come and pick them up. Seven bags. He can load himself. I'm not gonna sit around and wait. It's been almost an hour since he called and he lives a half an hour away. He said he was coming right down. So I don't know what the deal is. Doesn't matter. We got our pressure up to 27. Gotta be closer. I suppose I could open this front tank now and try it out of there. I was trying to get the end rows done and stuff because sometimes my speed isn't up to par and so it would affect the rate a little bit, but we're just trying to maintain consistency. All right, yeah. The fact that we can cover ground as fast as we can is um, it's a blessing when we've had issues like we have because we're going to have 160 acres planted here by... 2 o'clock, 1.30, and yeah, that's, that's awesome, so we might have a, I'm not going to say it, we'll jinx it if I say it, we are going to have a big day. It is truly amazing how much ground we can cover. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, right, but look at that, we were doing 64 acres an hour. That's, that's over an acre a minute. That's unbelievable to me. Well, that's the planter in the ground going. That doesn't include turning or getting to the fields or loading the planter or any of that. So we don't average anywhere remotely close to that. But the fact that we can do it when we're in the field, dang impressive. You guys know what else we got to do today? It's Monday. We got to go check our beans, our early planted beans. Today's six weeks since they were planted. They're all up. They look fantastic. They're beautiful. I am so thrilled with them. We'll go show you. If we get a chance here sometime today, take five minutes and go check them out. Okay, um, so we're doing some more end rows here, and well, we've got something to talk about when I get up to the other end of them, but everything's still going pretty well. I haven't switched fertilizer tanks yet, I should do that, but then I have to get out. We'll do it, we'll do it when I get up to the end here. Um, so we have some hunters that uh, they, they deer hunt some of these woods that we have here, and um, well, they pay us they pay us pretty well to do so. 
but they have some crazy ideas about making more deer come into the area or trying to get rid of the deer. Anyway, they really wanted us to leave some ground, a few acres for them to plant food plots and just to have for the deer to be in something, I don't know, whatever. They wanted as much as we would leave for them. And um, so Dad and I and Phil, we all kind of talked it over and we decided to square this off straight to those ends and not plant the little bit between the trees here. Now you would think, you know, don't do that because the deer hunters, what, why, would you, why would you do that for the deer hunter? Well, we figured out how many acres was in there and they paid us more for those three acres to not be planted than we would make on them growing corn. So we're gonna leave them and they're gonna plant it to something. It's not just gonna grow up to weeds. It's a little, it's a little counterintuitive and just hurts me to do, but whatever. So we're gonna have a deer food plot back here, I guess. Okay, well, we're gonna switch that um, tank that we're drawing from, but I also just got a, a low seat tank warning. So, maybe we're 300. Maybe we're gonna be out of seat soon. We're gonna look and see if we need to level them up, even them out. But yeah, I expected to run out of seat, and we're about in that spot, so I'm not surprised. There's not a lot of seed left in there, but there's enough make a few rounds. I don't know, maybe 10 acres or so. 32.8 acres. We started on this tank. There was 250 gallons in there. I got a low seed warning and I was going to come back here and level the tanks off so we could make it to the end of the field, but uh, they're all empty, so I guess we'll stop here and go get some more seed. Figure out how many acres we got left. How much seed we need, make it come out right. As nice as it would be to uh, just bring the seed tender over to the field here and fill it up, I have no way to get back to the farm. I'm not gonna call Dad or anybody else and bother them to get a ride. We're just, I mean, it's right there. It's, it, can you see it in the background? It's right there. Uh, plus, our flow meter might be there by the time we get this done. So we're just gonna head back there and uh, load her up and then See if we can't uh, change that flow meter while we're there. Easy fold, man, it's nice. All I gotta do is hold the lever here and watch it fold up. Folds the wings in, and then it picks up the three point hitch. Right there, and then it'll lift the wing wheels. Like so. And it's done. Okay, we are loaded up with enough seed to finish planting uh, that field there. Hopefully just enough and not a bunch extra, but we'll see where we are, where we're at. Um, we're taking the shortcut back way to that field that's it's, it's over there and we've got a, there's, there's connection between the trees there. Uh, and we're gonna swing by our backfield of uh, ultra early planted beans real quick and see what they look like. And then we're gonna go finish that field short detour oh yeah we can row them from here they look awesome let's go look the end rows are a little thin which they usually are but there's a lot here probably a few more will still fill in they'll be fine they'll be fine Ooh, there goes a haggy sprayer in the back road get out here into the main part of the field and let's see what we got. We do not have time to do stand counts today, so um, that ain't gonna happen. Maybe next week. But look at them. We got our unifoliates out, starting those trifoliates. They're just starting to grow. A few still popping. That one's gonna make it. That one's gonna make it. It just came out of the ground. Looks fantastic. Looks fantastic. I am thrilled. Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. So, uh, we'll have to watch the first planted beans that Phil did uh, earlier this week, or I guess last week now, and see how long those take to come out of the ground to kind of get an idea how much farther ahead these are. But it'll be interesting to watch all year. They look great. They're going to make it. No doubt in my mind, um, these are going to be great beans. While we're here, this is the field they just spread that fertilizer on. 
see them all here. When I get back in the tractor, we'll talk about the plan on this field or what we had spread here. So that field was wheat last year. We tiled it and uh, working it down here. Normally after wheat, we plant corn, almost exclusively. We normally plant corn, but we are a little bit heavier corn acres this year. And um, the rest of this farm is going to soybeans. So I decided to plant this to soybeans as well and not corn there. And it just helps balance our acres a little bit. Uh, it's a 22 acre field, so it's not like it's a huge amount, um, but that's a 50 acre swing almost. Ah, it was it was the right thing to do, but um, since we didn't spray any fertilizer on it last fall, we decided we better do some in the spring. We did not put any urea or nitrogen out here. What we did put on was some uh, potash and ammonium sulfate mostly. So the blend was 80% potash, 20% uh, ammonium sulfate. That gives us our potassium, O60 is potash. Um, so it's 60% potassium. And then the AMS does have some nitrogen in it. It's 210026 uh, and that's the sulfur. It's 26% sulfur. And I think the sulfur on the soybeans it will be extremely beneficial. And so that's why we did that. I also had them throw five pounds of boron in. Uh, dry boron products so uh, been playing around a lot more with that in the recent years and I think that will help and make a difference as well but uh, yeah we're uh, we're gonna hit this one more time with the field cultivator and then it will be ready to plant and we are back in our field where we're planting corn now we just gotta figure out where were we take that last pass we're on the opposite end that we drove out of so we'll take that opposite pass are, are the same pass and on the opposite end here and we should be able to just finish planting it all the way to the road. All right, well, we're just about done with this field here. Just got to get over to the fence row. What's that? Another two rounds? Something that's not much. Man, this goes so fast. Anyway, um, yeah, other than our fertilizer not being able to adjust and know what rate we're actually putting on, everything is working really well. So hopefully that flow meter is back at the farm when we get back there. It wasn't there when I filled up with seed the second time. Hoping we got enough seed. I can see daylight underneath that green bar in the tank there. Um, but we're close. It's gonna be a little close. close closer than I was hoping, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Right as I said that. I hope tank one's got more in it because we don't have enough if we're empty already. Crap. Well, there's tank two. It's just not level, and tank one does have a little more. We might be okay. Well, I think we're gonna make it. We've just got a partial pass here and then a partial pass along the house line up there. Um, one side of the planter might run out. We might have to circle back and use the other, you go the other way, so we use the seed from the other tank, but we should make it. Made it. There's the neighbor. They've been filling and getting that planter ready since I pulled back into the field. I've planted 40 acres the time it took them to load, but they got a sweet little tender truck there. Let's check our part shed. Come on, come on. Yeah. Oh, we got a whole bunch. Okay, that's not for us. This one here is, though. Good deal. Somebody else got some hydraulic oil. Right there is what we need. It's an expensive little bugger, but I don't care. It make my planter work. All right, so here's our old one that we took off. Here's the new one. We need to make those look the same. So I think we need to unthread this, unthread that. I thought about taking it apart here. Um, decided against that. So we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna take it in the shop and put this together. All right, there's our new flow meter all put together. I uh, The stands that came with it or the mounts um, were short, shorter. So I used the old ones. I hope that was our problem. Oh man. Anyway, we should be good to put this back on the planter. All right, we got it. We need a zip tie because I had to cut one. Um, but I got it. Hopefully that fixes it. We're gonna find out real soon. We're gonna get loaded up for the next field. We did not get nearly enough fertilizer put on on that one. Our, uh, our rate was low. Hopefully we can fix that. Getting our fertilizer loaded up. 
Dad's loading up the tender truck. He's going to spray beans where Phil's planting or going to finish up planting. And there's uh, 220 acres there, so he can't do it on one sprayer load. And, uh, yeah, we got a 57-acre field, the one we field cultivated last night. We're going to go plant, and then we're going to start in on what Brock's been doing this morning is our irrigated field. Uh, here's my first cut corner of the day. I'm not emptying that out. Normally, I would empty that out, but we aren't taking the time to do it today. Uh, we need 550 pounds in each tank. This is one of the other hybrids that I um, spilled. The stuff we're putting in now is a clean, clean box. It's good. I'm putting it in this side, hoping we get close to what we need. I don't know if there's enough in there or not. We'll put the dirty stuff in this side so at least it's isolated to half the planter, and hopefully it plants. This is the stuff that was a little dirtier than, uh, than the one that we planted this morning, which, by the way, we had absolutely no problems with. Planted just fine, so we'll see. All right, moment of truth on our flow meter here. We're gonna run a nozzle flow check. If this, oh, well, not that. If this shows anything, we have fixed our problem. It might take it a second. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes! And we've got flow out of all the rows. Excellent. Yes! I had a thousand gallons in there. It counted down. It's counting. It's counting. All right. Now there's a chance that we need to calibrate that, but it's an electromagnetic flow meter and um, it's identical to the one we took off. So we're gonna assume it's close enough and we'll see how we do. Triangle field this is where we took over last night for dad, about right here in the field. Just getting some end rows done and uh, our pump is working. 22, 23 PSI, we were in the ballpark. Okay. Um, off and rolling, I was wrong, our pressure is way higher, but now we're in a high rate zone, we're at speed. That's the thing, I didn't have the, the zones kind of dialed in right, um, or yeah, whatever. Anyway, we're fine. Uh, two years ago, this was the very first field we planted with corn, first field I used the 8RX in, and in this spot right here, we got stuck. Right here. I'm about to do it again for you guys. You watching? Don't put our row units in the pond over there. Floated right across it this time. The difference is, two years ago, Dad had just filled all that dirt in there. And it was loose and soft and it had not had time to settle. Now it's had time to settle. Ooh, let's not hit this post. The point of this triangle here plants a little different with 120 foot end rows. All right, we got it. Making the long passes along the river here. I did record a guidance line on the first one, so this should auto steer just fine the rest of the way. We're gonna have, I have dang near a quarter of the field done by the time we get done planting two passes around the size, and that doesn't even include the ends behind the houses and between the houses. So this one will go fast. Um, Brock has been working the field across the river all day today. That's our irrigated field. He's uh, finishing up. The little corner piece there, there's a 13 acre piece on the corner that that ditch separates. Uh, so he's finishing that up and then gonna go to the next one for a little while. Sounds like he's gotta go a little early tonight, or not really early, but early for planting season. Um, we're gonna go back and get loaded up and go plant that tonight. Hopefully all of it, but we'll see how that goes because um, it's gonna take more than one fill to plant that field. Dad's got my tender trailer and yeah, it's just going to be a little tricky to um, get that done. We might have to make several trips back and forth to the farm, which is not the end of the world. We'll do that if we have to. We might be here super late tonight. I don't care. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I would say we were way under applying our 2x2 uh, two two starter before. Did not realize we were running that kind of pressure. Now, this is a 17 and a half gallon zone, but so are a lot of the other fields that we planted at 25 pounds. Um, oh well, it's not that big of a deal. Now the rate does not double doubling the pressure because you're going through an orifice and the way that the, the fluid flows through it and stuff, doubling pressure does not double the rate. So um, we were just on the lower end. Let's, here, let's do some experimenting. Let's go predefined. So at 15, we're running 
50-ish pounds at 12 and a half, it drops to eh, 35, 30, 28, 30. So we were probably getting 12 gallons to the acre on when, uh, you know, I usually shoot for somewhere between 12 and a half and 17 and a half, depending on the zone. So we were a little light, not the end of the world. What it means is I'm not gonna run out of fertilizer. We saved a little bit on those two fields and uh, we should be able to put on as much as we need on everything else and not run out. So it's good, I guess. All right, we are moving right across this field. This is a field where row shutoffs are extremely valuable. Let me show you what our field looks like. So we got all these point rows. And if you watch, watch the green bars on the bottom of all these when we come into what we've already planted. See how those are shutting off? That is saving our seed and fertilizer and uh, not letting it overlap. We don't have the doubled up corn on these angled rows that doesn't yield anything and goes down. It's amazing, amazing technology. You can watch them all turn on and fill in that gap perfectly. It's awesome. It is awesome how good this stuff works. So we're down to, I know we got a long ways to go over there, but they're all really short rows. About 10 acres or so is all we got left to do in this field. 100% on the gauge wheels, 99.7 singulation. I, it's just unbelievable. 64 acres an hour. Ah, it's impressive. Just about done here. A few last point rows to do. Our um, liquid tanks are both about empty. We got 60 gallons left in the big tank in the back. It says we got 25 gallons left in our uh, pop-up tank, which is more than enough to finish. Um, was looking at my maps here a little bit. The uh, singulation map looks fantastic. This one's population, and you'll notice most of it is that darker or lighter green, a little yellow on the ends here. Um, that's my high zone. That's that's the high population zone in that uh, light green area there. I can't show you the background map anymore because it's all covered up. But um, this field mostly all has. So I, the way I make my uh, prescription maps, if you remember back to that video, if you watched it, was I take the last three year corn data and I create an average uh, yield for each individual zone or spot on the farm. Well, this farm, 90% of it is in the 200 plus the high yield zone. And so uh, it all gets a little bit higher fertilizer rates, a little higher population, and we push it. The last time we had corn up here, two years ago, this field averaged 255 bushel the acre. This was, outside of our irrigated corn, our best field of corn. So this is a really good one here. Good dirt along the river, a little bit sandier in spots. We've got it tiled well, finally. Uh, this is a darn good field. Okay, it is just before six o'clock. We are uh, done with this field. We're gonna head back to the farm to load up. It'd be much more efficient if I had a good tendering system to get this stuff up to the field, but it's a separate trip with a seed tender and the fertilizer tender, and Dad's using the fertilizer tender right now, so uh, it's just as easy for me to go home and load up and do it that way. So we're gonna do that. Um, 552, hopefully we can be back up here and planting by seven. That's probably pushing it, probably be a little after seven, um, but this should be a fairly easy fill because we need as much fertilizer as we want to comfortably carry, and we need a full box of seed split between the two tanks. So um, it's not like we got a bunch of screwing around to do. We might see how much left is, is left in the planter and uh, empty it out seed, but that won't take me too terribly long. I'm getting pretty good at it. We are, what are we at? 3.30 and we started the day at uh, 1.20. So we're 210 acres into the day uh, and we should get close to another 200 done tonight. Brock's out there making a little dust. Getting the next one ready for us after we go where he just finished. He probably isn't going to get this done before he's got to leave tonight. In fact, he's not going to get this done before he's got to leave tonight. But... Uh, Maybe Dad can run it a little later. Maybe we'll do it in the morning. I don't know, but we're going to try and get that one planted tomorrow before it rains.
All right, I kind of hate to do it, but we've got to go with a full load of fertilizer because we're going to take a full box of seed and we need enough fertilizer to plant that full box of seed, which we can do, but everything is going to be full, which means we're going to be very, very heavy. And uh, it's not my favorite thing. I like just taking what we need for a field, but when you have fields that are bigger than what you can hold, um, it's kind of the way it works out. So, uh, is what it is. Load her up. Put 600 gallons of pop up in and 1900 gallons of uh, the 2x2. Two two. Fertilizer is full. What time is it? 6 30. We might make it. We might make it. We just got to get seed in. We're going to pull around the back of the shop because I want to take out what's in there and load it back up. Good news our dirty seed, seed that we cleaned, didn't give us any trouble at all. Planted excellent, so hopefully that's good news and we won't have any trouble. Easiest way to get corn out of a box or beans or whatever. Take an empty out of the seed tanks. Take an empty box, set it under the doors, open them up. Use a piece of cardboard as a chute or a funnel. It's the easiest way. I have one of those uh, seed catchers that some company sells. It's a pain in the butt. This is way easier. Eleven hundred pounds in each hopper. Um, we're trying a different uh, seed lubricant, micronutrient pack type thing here. It's called Awaken Flow Boost from one of my suppliers. It's red. You can kind of see it on the kernel, but not really. Interesting. Um, this hybrid is twelve S seventy five. This is the one that we won the. Uh, I got second place in the state corn growers contest with two years ago going in the same field. Dang good corn, especially underwater. Um, but at 112 day, full season, and time to get it planted. I get the question a lot about why some of the kernels are different colored. The red ones are our refuge corn. So most all of the corn that we plant, in fact, all of the corn that we plant, has some insect resistant trait um, built right into it. Whether that is... Uh, Corn bore trait, just corn bore, or root worm, or Viptera, or yeah, those. And uh, the EPA requires there be a refuge in there, some corn that is not insect resistant. And so uh, they blend it at 5% right into the box or the bag. And the pink ones are the refuge that are non resistant to the insects. The reason for the non-resistant ones is to help with uh, resistance management. It's to give susceptible insects, fruit worms, corn borers, a host crop where they can feed and then they can mate with uh, any that may happen to be resistant to the trait to help uh, reduce the chances of the insects becoming resistant to the traits. Um, yeah. It works, it's science, it's, it's been like that for a long time, but that's the color, that's why the colors. There's another 24-row planter pulling a fertilizer tank in a tracks machine. All a little bit older stuff, but nice setup nonetheless. Don't hit your pole, bud. This is the field we just finished in. The field we need to go to is up that road, but there's a uh, seven ton weight limit bridge. We ain't crossing that. We are far heavier than seven tons like I would have to do some math to figure out how much we weigh but we might be pushing 100,000 pounds so uh, that field there is soybeans that Phil planted on Saturday I think it was Saturday night he did that we're making progress man I tell you what things are good today it is a slow ride up here we didn't make our seven o'clock. It's actually almost 7.30 and we're probably gonna be eight o'clock before we get started planting. We've got a few things we need to do before we start in this field. It's okay, we will get there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 13, 14 mile an hour on the road when we're full like this and that's plenty fast. Uh, my wife is gonna come up to the field and pick me up, take me to get my truck, which is at the first field we started in today. Uh, I forgot to bring a battery. I need a 12 volt battery of some sort because we have to power our base station for the 360 rain while we're up here. 
And um, yeah, that's important. Otherwise our rain won't work all year and we don't want that. So uh, I'm going to go and just get a, a battery and some cables or something. We're gonna just wire into it with the 12 volts and not worry about running a, a generator at 110 volts because it just is running it through a transformer anyway. So uh, I have a battery in my truck. I just need some wires to hook it up and we'll make this work. All right, well, we got our base station hooked up and we are off and planting. So on the iPad here, I've got the uh, 360 Rain app pulled up and it just shows good to plant. I thought it might show us out here in the field. It does not, but we can see some parameters from our uh, planter. Lift switches are lowered. It shows me a tilt thing and we've got uh, fixed to the satellites and everything is good and it is recording our passes and uh, we should be... We should be good to go. Everything on the seed side of it looks good. Singulation is excellent. Um, let's go. Let's do it. It is 8.14. So we started probably at 8.10. I'm on my second pass of the end rows here. And uh, we'll see how long it takes us to plant until we run out of seed. I'm guessing about an hour and a half. Eh, probably closer to two hours. What a nice big field. We need more of these 175 acre fields. That's that's fun. It is super dusty. It is very dry up here. Now this is the sand ridge. There's there's a ridge. You can see where it turns color, the dirt all the way across the field, but there's whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, dropped my phone. There's a ridge that goes all the way across over there uh, that's kind of sandy, and well that's why we irrigate this field. And then it kind of drops off and there's a draw and it's low ground along the river in the back there, and that's the good stuff. That dirt back over there is where we do corn growers entries. Well, our uh, rain antenna glitched out for a second. About halfway down that pass, it quit recording. But now we've got yellow or green lines there and everything seems to be good. We checked some connections and made sure all the antennas were pointed the right way and everything. And I don't know, I think we're good to go. I almost feel like I'm a NASCAR driver, leaving a cloud of dust all the way across the field. Just hammer down. Two iPads. We got all too many monitors. Too many dang monitors in here. But we're using the, the good iPad for the the rain stuff. And uh, so I got my Connect Mobile running over here, showing me singulation and population. Um, so these green lines here, those are the paths that our 360 rain machine is going to follow. That's why it's important to have this on here because it's tracking exactly where that planter runs, and it's going to basically run down these exact same tire tracks and the, the outer two wheels on the rain will follow the tracks from the tractor so uh, we'll know how many passes it's going to need to make once we get done with this field well we're having to keep a pretty darn close eye on our uh, rain app up there it it cut out on me one more time and uh yeah, I don't want to plant long without catching that. Now the dealer is watching and he called me almost instantly. So um, those guys have been awesome. The dealer, and then he got on a conference call with uh, somebody from 360. And uh, the guy knew what he was doing and talking about and check, things to check and stuff. And I haven't quite figured out why it keeps cutting out and what's going on. Uh, a couple of different theories and ideas. They were going to talk some more and stuff. But the dealer offered to bring another planter kit up tonight, right now, so we can keep planting nine o'clock at night so um fortunately we're running and hopefully we keep running everything working and he doesn't have to make it up here but man what kind of support is that and while we're talking about dealer support i am going to give a huge huge shout out to green mark equipment um they don't pay me to talk about them and how good they are but man i had a flow meter go bad on this planter yesterday on a Sunday. I called somebody from the dealership on his personal cell phone because we're friends. No, not his personal cell phone. I called his work number. First thing I said to him was, it is seven o'clock on a Sunday. You can hang up on me at any time. But he kind of talked through stuff with me. We figured out what the problem was. He was at the store at 7 a.m. to tell me, we don't have the part here. Here's where it is. They then got that part to me by one o'clock today from a store two and a half hours away. That is just unbelievable service and I am extremely thankful uh, for them. So 
huge thank you to Green Mark Equipment for getting me up and running. And um, man, I, it's why we run a lot of deer equipment because we have really good dealers. I had to do some end rows in the back of this field here. Oh, don't hit that post. Don't hit that post. Just missed it. Okay. Um, the This field, let me show you the shape of this field. How do I show you the shape of this field? It is, uh, it's, it's weird. It's triangular shaped. Um, right? Looks like that. These rows go this way, and they're too long with this triangle back here. We can't harvest three-quarter to or more mile-long roads. And so we extend these ends along here all the way across and kind of create a second set of end rows through here. And um, that means we're planting right across this. Don't go away. No, 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 no. Make sure she's still working. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what we do here. If we do it right, we come out right by that white post over there. You guys see it right there? Because that is where the two triangles come together and right along the river here. And it lines up with the, the, the edge of the field over here. And we came out pretty dang close. Now the question is, do I keep going? Do we keep going? Do we keep going? No, we're not going to keep going. We could keep going and plant these ends, but... We're not gonna do that. We are gonna plant these ends, just not right now. Of course, one of the big advantages to this rain uh, irrigation system versus the hard hose traveler that we had before is we don't have to leave irrigation lanes anymore. Um, you can look at our background map here on our Connect Mobile and you can see these lanes. This picture was taken in, uh, I don't know what year this one was. It's different than the other iPad. Um, but those are all the irrigation lanes from before. We had this lane down the center, and then we had to leave a 10-foot gap um, with no corn in it. Well, the rain system goes right over top of that, and we pick up about two and a half acres by not doing that. So it's awesome. So we're out here right in the middle of the field. In fact, this stake here is where our riser needs to be for the 360 rain. So we're kind of behind that barn over there and where the well was gonna be and then we'll have to bury pipe to here roughly, somewhere in here. And the stake was actually right in the middle of the uh, tractor here. You can see this little area that did not get worked. We had left, we had left a strip basically from like right here for, I don't know, 40 feet or whatever, 50 feet uh, that we did not rip last fall because we thought we were gonna be burying pipe all winter. And uh, that hasn't happened yet because we didn't get a well. Um, but anyway, that stake was right here in the middle of the tractor. I really want it to be right on the edge of a planter pass. So I moved it over 30 feet so that it'll split the passes. And then, you know, when we have a structure here or a permanent riser or something, um, we can just have one planter pass that will have to curve around it a little bit and the other one will be straight through. So that's what I'm doing there. We'll move that out of the way. Everything's going really well here. We're covering ground in a hurry. Ooh, that dust just keeps coming. Uh, we got a seed bin low warning already. We shouldn't get that yet, which means our tanks are pretty uneven, so we got to level them out. We'll try that. I've moved about six buckets from that one into this one. Looks like it was a good time to stop anyway. Our big tank is just about empty. We'll switch our valves and start pulling from the front tank. It's about where we're supposed to be. I'll see how many gallons it says we're supposed to have left, but I don't think we're too far off here. We got 300 gallons on the front, and uh, yeah, we should be close. Yeah, I should have 430 left, so we're getting around a little heavy now, I guess. I don't know. Okay, um, so we should have enough seed for maybe 20 acres. I doubt we'll get 20 acres out of it. 15, something like that. It's about what we've got fertilizer for. Um, I decided we're going to come and fill in this back triangle here. So the, the good areas of this field are the green areas there, right? 
and uh, we've got quite a significant amount of the green area planted up here to this hybrid. I want to save some of it for the other hybrid so that we can have two different NCGA entries out here in the very good dirt. And so we're going to plant out most of this seed in this triangle in the back. Not that this isn't good ground, it just hasn't been as productive in the past. Now this was unirrigated in the past. I could not reach it with our uh, hard hose traveler. So all of this is going to get watered this year and it should be really good stuff. Um, just hasn't ever gotten it in the past. So yeah, we'll see. Um, but that's what we're doing. Okay, we got that triangle done in the back there. And uh, we are just about out of seed. Um, I had to go level the bins off again. 103 acres. Yeah, like I said, we've got about 105. So I don't even think we're going to make it back to the other end of the field there. It is 11.20 at night. They have pushed the rain off until tomorrow afternoon or around noon, one o'clock. So I think the plan here is we're gonna head back to the farm with the tractor and planter. We're going to get, maybe load some stuff up, maybe just put seed in, do the fertilizer in the morning, maybe do, I don't know, we'll see. And get it ready to go so we can get up here fairly early tomorrow morning and get this one done. I don't have anywhere to go after this yet anyway. Um, Brock had to leave 6.30 tonight, so field cultivator's been sitting. He's got about half of the next field ready, uh, fit down, but I'm hoping Dad can run that in the morning and kind of get ahead of us, and he can do that while we're planting up here, and if all goes well, which sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, right? Um, oh, low rate exceeded. We are out of fertilizer. Okay. And we're about out of seed too, so. Um, but if all goes well, yes, I shut it off, it's okay. Uh, we should be able to get both of these fields, the rest of this one and that next one planted tomorrow. Well, we did make that pass. I did not think that we would, um, but that's good. It's fine, there cannot be very much seed in there. We aren't gonna worry about it. We're gonna go back ready to uh, load stuff up. Um, we planted half a pass there with no two by two. We are a little test plot. So that puts us up to 436 planted, which is about 320 today, three, maybe 315. That's a dang good day. I don't, I don't care what you do. That's a dang good day. I was hoping to get this one done. I don't think we're gonna do that. If it was gonna be raining any time or overnight or first thing in the morning, we would come back and work on this tonight, but it's not, and uh, we ha we'll have time in the morning. So no reason to push it more than we need to. Um, we are much lighter now, but we're still going around and not taking the bridge. The seven ton bridge, the tractor is too much for the seven ton bridge. Loading the planter up. We aren't going back tonight, but we're gonna get the seed in it. We'll fill fertilizer in the morning and get that field finished up. Putting another full box in, 11V76. We planted some of this already today, putting in another full box. Um, don't need a full box to finish that field, but we got that little field on the corner, and that is the same variety going in the next field after that. So, might as well just put the whole box in. 1230. All right. Good enough, guys. Thanks for watching this one. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, uh, door. Got to close the door. Come on, man. We'll be back at it tomorrow morning. Hope the rain holds off long enough for us to get what we need to get done, what we want to get done. Um, we have just about caught the tillage, though. That's the thing, right? So um, I've got there's 70 ish acres left in that field, not quite, 68 left in that field to plant. We've got the 13 acres across the ditch to plant. So what's that, 80, about 80. And uh, and then hopefully Phil will get, or uh, dad will get some more stuff worked up and we'll have another, um, gosh dang it, lights. 100 to plant. There's another 100 in the next field. We could get that done before noon, before it rains easily, especially planters already loaded with seeds, put the fertilizer in quick and go. Um, we should be in the field earlier tomorrow than we were today. So 
Um, yeah, that should work. And then Phil has caught the tillage as well. He doesn't have anything that he can plant right now uh, to beans because we got to get the disc moving. So I would assume he'll jump in the disc in the morning, maybe the field out back here or something like that. But have a great night, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow.